Okay, again, we're looking at Python 3 here. Uh, and um, again, this is part of a series. There should be an annotation at some point in this video, if not throughout the whole thing, that will lead you to a playlist of all the videos in this series. But again, I'm putting out a new video every Wednesday. So if you're watching these as I'm putting them out, uh, the, the playlist may seem to just end. Uh, and I do get that comment on my my videos sometimes just let you know it's 2013 it's October ish now um, so if you're watching this in 2013 the playlist may not be done if you're watching this in the future you should be able to watch the whole playlist anyway today we're gonna be getting into uh, user inputs so last week we learned how to use the print command and again if you haven't watched them watch the first two videos or at least the second video the first one was more of just an introduction but we can say print hello Chris and it will print the words, hello, Chris. And we learned how to create a variable like, uh, we'll say name equals Chris. And I can say print, uh, hello plus name. And it will print, hello, Chris, because the variable name equals Chris. Well, how do we get the username? How do we put, I mean, as a programmer, I can put the word Chris into the variable, but let's say I want to retrieve that from the user. Uh, well, we can use the input function. So we can say input and inside parentheses. Well, you know, how do we, how do we know how the input function works? So if you remember the first tutorial, uh, I showed you how to use the help command. So we can say help and inside here, inside quotations because we want to pass it a string and last tutorial we learned what that was uh, help input so this is going to look at what the 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 man file the the instructions the help file for the input function so we do that it's very short and it tells you how to use it right here it says input and inside here it asks it says you want to put in a prompt and it will output a string okay so we're saying read a string from the input, from the standard input. The standard input is going to be what the user's typing on the keyboard in this case. Um, it gives you a little info on, you know, trailing new line is stripped, um, which means it doesn't, if when, you, when the user hits enter, basically is saving the string and not putting a new line character into the string. Okay, gives you a little more information. You know, if the user hits end of file, tells you what those are on different operating systems, it raises an end of file error, okay. And it goes into a little bit more, um, but mainly what we're looking at right now is how to use it. And that's basically this right here, input and inside parentheses, we got to give it a prompt. The prompt is what we're going to ask the user. And then what they type is going to be outputted as a string. So let's, uh, I hit Q to get out of that. So I'm going to say input inside parentheses, we're going to give it a prompt, which is going to be a string in this case. And it's going to say, what is your name? question mark uh, and if I hit enter here it will display what is your name and I can type in Chris and it will output the word Chris as a string with quotations around it okay so um, that looks a little funny you know what you could do is you could put a space here because it looks weird writing Chris right up next to that uh, Chris and hit enter there and I'm gonna try something that I haven't tried in Python 3 but should work is backslash n this is a little extra bonus thing usually backslash n means new line so if I hit that you can see it says what is your name and then it brings the cursor down to the next line you know if we put two of those backslash n's it would go down two lines and so I think this looks a little bit more appropriate it says what is your name and on the next line you type Chris and it outputs Chris uh, f me personally and this is just cosmetic I can I can say if I want it all in one line I would say enter your whoa your name and then I would do colon space and now that looks a little more proper to me but when you have it a question I think the, the answer should be on the next line but that's just once again cosmetic uh, from my point of view what looks better but that's a little extra tidbit of a tip if you've once again if you've done programming you know that new line is usually backslash n not always but usually that will work now that's great it asked a question that we prompted and the user was able to type it and then output it as a string but we, we want to save it to a variable well last time we showed you and earlier I showed you I can say name equals something and this what we've been doing is putting a string inside uh, quotations either single or double depending on what we're doing um, well that's why the input command outputs a string because we're passing it at a function here so 
I can say function input. Um, here I can say, what is your name? Question mark. That doesn't need to be capital. And I'll say new line. And so now, when I hit enter, it's going to ask that question. I'm going to type in Chris. And this, in this case, we're not passing in a string. Because before we said, uh, where did we say it? Up here we said name equals quotations Chris. So it's looking for the string here. Well here, it's not going to put this. We don't have quotations around that. If I did, then it would think that's a string. What it's looking for is a string that that's going to output. So you see when I hit enter that time, unlike a previous time where it displayed the string, it actually went into the variable name. So now I can say print and I can say name and it will print Chris. If I went back up and I did the same command again, by the way, again, I hit up arrow to go through previous commands. I'm going to hit enter here and it says name equals input. What is your name? I can type in John. Now, if I hit up a few times, I go back to my print name. And again, I don't have quotations around this because this is a variable. If I put quotations around it, it would print the word name. But we don't want to print the word name. We want to print what name, the, the variable name equals what it's been set to, what it's been defined as. And we just changed it from Chris to John. So now when I say print name, it's printing John. And of course, we can go, hello, John. No, hello, John. Hello, space, plus, outside of the quotations, name. And it will say, hello, John. And again, right now we're using the interpreter. As I said in the last video, I'm using a lot of the stuff, the simpler stuff in the interpreter. Later on, we're going to take the stuff that we type, put it into a plain text file, and then run it through the interpreter. And that's how you write scripts. Right now, we're just working directly within Python. Later on, we're going to take these same commands and put them inside a script. So understand that. Um, now, you n may also notice um, that, in this case, we said, like, uh, enter your name, and I entered Chris, and then it output the string with single quotes around it. And as we, we stated in the last tutorial, one of the differences between using single quotes and double quotes is, um, is if you want to use single quotes or double quotes, and then if you use double quotes and you want to have double quotes, I just whacked my microphone. Uh, if you have double quotes and you want to use double quotes within your string, you have to use backslashes to indicate that these are quotations that should be used in the string and not the end of the string. Well, what happens if someone enters something with a single quote, also known as apostrophe? So obviously, people don't usually have apostrophes in their name that I know of. But let's go back up. Let's say, what is your name? Uh, and let's do it uh, without putting it in the variable so we can see what this function actually outputs. And I'll just say um, John's. And I'll hit enter. And you can see it put it as double quotes. So you might be asking, well, what happens if I put both double and single quotes in there? Well, let's give that a try. We'll say uh, John's, and I'll just put a quotation there, uh, see what happens. And you see it used the single quotes, and it put a backslash in there for you. So Python is smart enough to know, uh, the, the input function is smart enough to know when to use what. And so it kind of takes care of that issue for you when the user is inputting. Cause Whenever you're getting input from a user, you got to realize that users, most users are not programmers, and they don't know what they can and can't put. So if this function didn't already exist, this input function, and you had to create one, you would have to think of all the different things that a user might put in there that they shouldn't, you know? But luckily, it's already done for you with the input function. Um, so, so you don't have to worry about it. So don't worry about them putting in single quotes or double quotes uh, because it will handle it for you at least uh, in this simple complex uh, simple scenario uh, later down the line you know uh, we'll see we might run depending on what you're doing if you're trying to write functions that handle that stuff it, yeah anyway storing at different places and whatnot but uh, so to so we we finish this tutorial <laughs> Thank you for watching. Again, uh, the viewers asked for Python and specifically Python 3 tutorials. So that's what I'm delivering every Wednesday 
for the next few months. Uh, be sure to check out the annotation on the screen for the full playlist. Um, visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. Uh, there you can easily search through my playlist videos. If you have comments, comment below. I love to hear them, even though I don't really get to read them all because I get so many of them, but I try to read some of them at least. Um, but if you have a question, a technical question, the comments are a horrible place to ask them. Obviously, always Google your question first because that's what Google's there for. But if you just have, uh, if you do have a question you can't find an answer to on this or other topics I talk about, or you just want to come and hang out with other people that like things that you like, uh, check out the IRC channel. There's a drop down under social networking on my website. It'll bring you to the IRC channel. Plenty of fun people in there to talk to, and they are logged in quite often, but not always at the computer. So when you come, plan to come and hang out, not just come in and ask a question expect an answer right away it might take a couple hours might take a couple days who knows but i do thank you for watching and i hope that you have a great day i also hope that you come back next week for the next video if you're watching them as i put them out if you're watching them at a future date again click on the annotation for the playlist and watch them all thank you again and have a great day